2016 Honda Accord. It was in an accident, got a new condenser. I just charged it up. And I'll just show you a little difference between fresh air mode and temperature out the dash with the doors open, pulling air through the corral right here, fresh air, it's not on recycle. This is a clutch, it's not a, this one is not a variable displacement. This one is strictly a straight up clutch that cycles off and on. As you can see, we got condensation of water starting here. We got nice cold, wet pipe. So our suction line, our superheat's at 11 right now, but this is just at idle and under these conditions. So we are, our suction line is at 42 degrees. You can see our superheat, we're at 14 right now. I'm gonna shut the windows. Oh, let's look at the temperature out the dash. Right now, the air temperature going into the car through the, right here is 74, 75 degrees. It'll focus. Right there, 78 degrees, 74, it's wavering. And our supply air is 43 degrees out the dash. So we're coming out 43 degrees out the dash. And there's my sensor right there in the middle. And as you can hear, you don't hear the clutch kicking on and off. If you look at the pressures, you don't see them raising and falling from the uh, clutch kicking on and off. The fans are at a steady speed. Both fans are operating at a low speed. So right now I'm going to close the doors, roll up the windows, and this will force the car to get cooler. It'll meet its minimum temperature that it is set to, and then you'll hear it kick out the clutch on the compressor. You'll watch the pressures and temperatures change. So let me do this. And you'll physically be able to see this particular clutch. Now remember, a lot of new vehicles are variable displacement compressors and they do have clutches. So now all the doors and windows are closed. Oh, I didn't put it on recycle. Let's put it on recycle. So we're not putting hot air from outside over the evaporator, we're gonna take the load off of it. So now we're, let's hit recycle right here, right there. We're now in recycle mode. So now we should see our dash temperature lower, our high side pressure lower, our low side pressure lower, and our, oh, and we kicked out of uh, battery saving mode because it was on so long. All right, now we see, remember, I think we were, we were 41 degrees Fahrenheit on the suction line temperature. Look, we're 35 degrees temperature, and I just heard the clutch kick out. And now you see the high side falling, and the clutch just kicked in. You just heard it. So, so the suction line went in recycle because we already have cooler air in the cab than the hot, warmer air that was taken out here. It looks like we're dropping our suction line down to about 35 degrees sometimes. And now the compressor is starting to kick in and out because it's at reached its minimum temperature. But look on this particular vehicle. We only dropped like two degrees down to 41 degrees on uh, the low side by going from recycle to clutch. This does have tinted windows. This has light tint on the front light tint on the side windows and dark tint on the moonroof the side this makes a difference uh actually there are some window real cheap window tints that are dyes uh, that are really cheap and the actual window tint gets hot it doesn't reflect the infrared uh wavelength of sunlight it actually absorbs it it doesn't let the visible light through but it makes the windows hot and that could cause and that's what happens when you get some cheap tint tints so on the last video, I talked about a air conditioning school with an instructor in Nigeria that was teaching his students to use the mobile recovery machine. And he was recovering off the liquid line and you can literally see the oil and the refrigerant passing his sight glass. He was sucking out and he told him this was the right way to do it. Uh, no, that's not the right way to do it. Now, here was another thing, another video, the same instructor 
from this school for air conditioning and automotive and other classes that people, students would pay to go to, they don't know the instructor is teaching them the wrong way to do it. He also showed them another way of trying to recover some of the gas. They take, in their country, they have tanks that don't have one-way valves on them. Uh, so they would take an empty tank, and he says, you take an empty tank, and he would put it up to the high side, and he would run the vehicle and turn on the engine and the compressor and get the high side liquid line, you know, get the high side up to a high pressure, and then open up the tank that's under vacuum and suck out and push from the compressor the liquid refrigerant and all the oil that's in that refrigerant would go out into the AC. And then he tells the students, once you have these tanks filled with refrigerant, when you do that, he takes up the same tank and hooks it back up to the gauges. And now we're gonna recharge the system. And they recharge the system by, he just feels temperature out of the dash. He says, oh, this line is cold. Now you're correctly charged and you can charge the customer money and make money and open up your own shop and this is how you do business. Oh my God, that was so scary to watch this guy who is an instructor in a school teaching automotive classes do stuff like that. And this is in Nigeria. Uh, and I see this in other schools that go online and teach in some of these countries. They literally hire guys who don't know what they're doing and they teach the students the incorrect procedures and then they go out and work on customers char cars and go and work in shops and wonder why they burn up so many compressors and the AC doesn't charge correctly. This is a really, really scary situation. What is that? And you know what? We're in the United States and it's n almost no difference. It's not too much better than that. Uh, so just because we're in a first world country doesn't mean we have first world education. It actually has reverted and went backwards. Um, thank God there are some individuals like in commercial and residential HVAC like Brian Orb's channel and we have a uh, service HVAC service LLC and a few others who are doing a really good job of getting correct information out there. Um, all right, so that's it for this one. But that was a very scary video to watch an instructor teach students. And not only that, here's another thing. When you run a compressor, the compressor is running and you're pumping out the liquid, you're removing oil. So now you're removing the oil that is supposed to get to the expansion valve and it's supposed to go through the expansion valve and that cold refrigerant is supposed to come back and deliver oil and cold refrigerant to cool the compressor. Well, as fast as you're removing the oil and refrigerant out of that liquid line, you are no longer getting subcooling coming back to the compressor like you see right here. You see all that water condensation right there? You see that? That's all water because it's nice and cold. You are not getting a cold delivery to cool off that compressor and you're starving it for oil. So you're literally running the pistons and the cylinders dry of oil and no cooling so you could get refrigerant out there and you're starting to score the cylinder walls with the pistons and the piston rings are made out of a soft material that wasn't and needs to be lubricated and now you're going metal to piston ring material with no oil lubrication and overheating and you're starting score and wear marks. And so now you get a little bit of piston compression blow by because now you have scored piston ring material and you started a rough surface on the pistons or the cylinder walls with a little bit of damage, just a micro amount of damage. But what will happen, this will not go away. After you add lubrication, you now have a rough surface with imperfect, not perfect piston ring material because they keep running the system down until they can't get anything more out with a compressor. And no, low pressure switches don't always turn off on all vehicles when the refrigerant level gets old. It's just there for proving. And once it proves the pressure, it'll allow the compressor to run until it's off. All right, that's it for now. Uh, scary videos uh, that are actually put out on the internet by a automotive HVAC school uh, with an HVAC teacher and uh, don't always trust YouTube.
and, and I'm on YouTube. <laughs> See you guys.